Uh, next question is, do you think the healthcare workforce is going to come out of this situation stronger or do you feel there'll be a significant negative impact in the end? Uh, why and how can we influence our destiny? Well, there will be transient negative impacts for sure. And we're, we're already beginning to kind of experience that firsthand. But I have every confidence that we will emerge from this situation more unified as a team. Um, I am, I'm really encouraged by the well-planned and robust response that we've worked hard to put together uh, here at Memorial. Uh, I'm inspired by all the well-orchestrated efforts uh, from very senior leadership, uh, top down throughout the entire health system. Uh, you know, how we've allocated and reallocated resources, including personnel, space, personal protective equipment in order to prepare. Uh, it's really a testament to our organization's culture of collaboration and how we can really come together as a team. Uh, you know, I can give some examples. We've, you know, in our integrative medicine clinic, we've switched to 100% telehealth. Yes. Uh, so we're using these wonderful technologies to connect with our patients and, and to kind of maintain a rapport with them. Uh, when when there's a lot of anxiety about health, um, you know, to, to, to provide them an opportunity to answer their questions uh, during this challenging time. You know, I hear that physicians from our cancer center are have 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 volunteered to team up with our Memorial Primary Care uh, uh, group in order to facilitate testing at CB Smith Park uh, and assist with the drive through screenings for the virus. Um, you know, we've reappropriated our our graduate medical education auditorium, uh, you know, to prepare for potential uh, overflow uh, from the hospital. Uh, so it's really just an am amazing coming together that I see. Um, and, and, you know, another advantage that we have as a health system is our, is our focus on wellness and resilience. You know, resilience has been a, a very important theme throughout this whole year. And I think this, this pandemic actually provides a very interesting arena in which we can we can test firsthand our our resources for wellness our physician wellness committee has come together and provided a list of resources that providers that uh, physicians can use and we're going to be making that available more broadly to the rest of the health system um, so we're really taking a proactive approach to you know health and wellness and resilience uh, more broadly so I'm, I'm incredibly encouraged, and I think that we will emerge from this crisis uh, even stronger as a team. I 100% agree with you, definitely. What recommendations do you have for staff working extremely long and hard hours? They're covered in personal protective equipment. They're worrying about their own ability to stay strong as well as their families. So, so unmitigated stress, dehydration, and lack of sleep. Are, are probably very significant risk factors. All of these three have been shown to kind of weaken our, Im, our own immune response. Um, so first and foremost, you know, the, just the same thing that people encourage in the, when, when, when you have the common flu uh, mm -hmm. or, or a cold, and, and that is you know, rest and hydration. If I had to write a, 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 a provider's, a, a physician's manual uh, for any of those people who are first line boots on the ground, Mm -hmm. um, taking care of people in the midst of this crisis. The title of the manual would be fitted in. You have to fit in, in that self-care. You have to fit in, you know, the hydration. You know, I, 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 have a, I have a very large water bottle. I count how many times I get through it every single day. I have a, 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 a daily water intake goal for myself. Nice. I think it's important to establish that. Yes. Um, as, a, as a general rule, if you, if you take your body weight in kilograms and convert that over into ounces, that's a bare minimum for how many ounces you should be drinking on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a sleep, I'm a sleep medicine expert by training, so getting enough sleep is imperative. Yes. Um, and, and really, you know, asking for help whenever we need it. Um, I've just seen an outpouring of, of, of assistance. Uh, you know, people are really kind of working together in cohesion in the, in the midst of this crisis. And so, you know, let's not be afraid to ask for help when we need it. And also to kind of preemptively address our needs, to kind of anticipate our own needs. Um, and, you know, a really great example that I heard from our uh, Memorial Regional ER is Dr. Randy Katz, who is uh, the medical director of the emergency room at Memorial Regional. Uh, he and his wife actually put together a impromptu fundraiser. And yeah. I think they raised over five figures to, to get food for the ER staff. And, and you know, this is, this is how we can preemptively address our needs. And... Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of proactively address 
uh, these potential stressors to mitigate them uh, before they become overwhelming. Yes, I definitely agree. That was a really cool uh, fundraiser that they that they devised, and it also helps local businesses because they provide the food to the to the uh, frontline staff. So Absolutely. thank you for mentioning that for sure. Absolutely. 